Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another exciting edition of Free Advice Friday. Uh, looking forward to spending some time with you today and, and answering some of your voiceover business and marketing questions. Uh, as always, I know that uh, things were, were going really well uh, with, with consistently having guests on, and I promise you that I'm going to get back to bringing in a guest for at least part of the show. Uh, I've been trying to get over this cold flu virus whatever that that's been I've been dealing with all year basically up to this point uh, so I've been apprehensive about scheduling anything just in case I wasn't able to come on live so uh, because I know I'm feeling good I, I scheduled this yesterday so I thought great we'll do it but I will get back to getting some guests in and, and having some fun with bringing some people on live again but in the meantime I am absolutely here and absolutely ready to answer any of your voiceover business and marketing questions that you may have for Free Advice Friday. So uh, if there's a question that you would like to ask and get answered, it's very simple. Uh, type it into the comments. Just put a Q beside it as you're typing into the comments. That way it stands out for me in the chat. It makes it a little bit easier for me to find it. And uh, as I see questions pop up, I will certainly do my best to answer them. Um, I'm happy to talk about anything uh, business and marketing related from a voiceover standpoint uh, and, and and happy to dive into all of those things with you. Um, I want to mention while we're waiting for a few people to to jump in here, I, I've been working all week. I know I haven't been around much this week. I, I haven't been in my Facebook group very much. I haven't been doing a whole lot on social media. Uh, that's because I am working on the update to Playbook 3.0. And I would say at this point, I'm about 25% of the way through the update for Playbook 3.0, uh, reevaluating some of the content that's in it. A lot of the content is staying, just needs to be updated or refreshed a little bit, but definitely adding some new stuff along the way as well as things have changed and, and uh, you know, strategies and tactics have, have evolved a little bit. So I've uh, been working away this week on that, getting, getting Playbook 3.0 ready to go. That's going to be coming out April 11th through the 20th of 2023. Um, because the question will get asked, uh, it always does. If you have previously purchased Playbook, you will get access to the updated version of the course. Uh, but then for those of you that are looking to get in for the first time, this is going to be a really good time to do it. So mark your calendars for that uh, April 11th through the 20th for Playbook 3.0. That's when that one is coming back. Uh, welcome, Uncle Roy. Uh, Ray's here. Who else is here? Alton's here. Laura's here. John's here. Troy. Great to see all of you. Thank you for, for popping in. The voice of Ryan, welcome, hello. So again, if you've got a question that you would like to ask and get answered, uh, I'm here to answer anything voiceover business and marketing related. It is my pleasure to do it. Uh, all I would ask is if you are going to type that question into the comments, if you could please put a, a capital Q beside it. So type a capital Q and then type your comment or your question. Uh, that way it, it's a little bit easier for me to, to see uh, as stuff starts ripping through the, uh, the chat window here, it gets a little bit harder to find those questions. So if you could just put that Q beside it. Uh, that would be really helpful. So don't be shy. If you've got a question that you would like to ask and get answered, um, I'm here. I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's let's talk uh, Free Advice Friday. Uh, getting ready for VO Atlanta. I'm very excited about that. I'm going to be doing a couple of presentations at VO Atlanta. It's going to be fun to be back there. This is the going to be, I, I mean, I was going to say it's my first in-person conference since 2019, but that's not actually true because I did go to VO North in September. Uh, but this will be my first time back at VO Atlanta uh, since 2019. So very excited to be back, very excited to uh, have the opportunity to see everyone and, and meet some uh, meet some new people, see some old friends. Uh, so that's going to be a really good time if you're attending VO Atlanta. Uh, I'm doing a couple of different X sessions, so keep an eye out for those X sessions. I'm going to be working with you on writing your marketing email. Uh, by the time we're done in that X session, you are going to have an introductory marketing email template that you can work off of and you can use over and over and over again. And uh, we'll also talk some subject lines and things of that nature as well. So uh, that's going to be what my X session is about. And then I'm going to be doing a, a breakout session uh, on the 10 marketing commandments for the VOpreneur. And I'm going to be leading the business and marketing panel as well. So uh, by the time VO Atlanta is done, you guys, you're going to probably be sick of hearing from me, but it's, uh, it's going to be a really good weekend. And uh, I'm very, very excited to to be a part of it. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Welcome, Janice. Welcome, Briscoe. Thanks for popping in. Again, if you've got a question, just type it in the comments, put a Q beside it so that it pops out on my screen. Uh, anything business and marketing related, I am happy to answer those questions for you. So don't be shy. 
Uh, here we go. Hey, Mark, do you suggest sending emails to general accounts? How do you handle that? Thanks. So, um, great question, uh, Vanny Fair. I'm assuming that what you're saying is, uh, you know, I've gone to a website and the only thing I can find is an info at or a hello at or a contact at. So one of those general type inboxes. Uh, so what do I do when that's the only thing that I can find is one of those general inboxes? Well, I'll tell you what I do. I send the email. I always send the email. Here's the thing. If they are only offering just that one form of contact on their website, if there's no other email address that is available on their website, odds are somebody is checking that email. So maybe it's all coming into a, a central inbox. Maybe it's coming through a gatekeeper, uh, you know, a receptionist or something like that. And that person's responsible for forwarding emails off to the appropriate people. So I will always send an email if that's all I can find. Because here's the thing, any email sent is better than an email not sent, right? Any email that is sent has a better chance of producing results than an email that is not sent. So I'm always gonna go ahead and send that email. Um, the one thing that I would suggest if you are going to send to a generic inbox is still try to find somebody to address it to. So look at, can you find a creative director, a video producer, whatever, can you find an individual that you can address it to so that when that email lands inside of the inbox of whomever the gatekeeper is, they will at least know who to forward it on to, right? So if you find out that Bob is the creative director, send the email and address it, hey, Bob. That way, when it lands, whoever's receiving it can say, oh, this is for Bob, Whoop, forward it off to Bob, right? So even when you can only find the generic email inbox, at least still try and figure out who that is going to go to. But yes, will I send a generic email or uh, will I send to a generic address? Always. And the same thing goes for a web form. If the only form of contact that they have on their website is a web form, again, somebody is checking the results of that web form. Somebody is going to answer emails that are coming in through that web form. So I'm, I'm still going to send it. Uh, because hey, sometimes you just can't find the actual address and that's okay, but don't be afraid to send it to that generic inbox. Hey, Briscoe says, hey Mark, will the new playbook include the leads that the last version came with? Um, it will actually include a new lead list, I think, that's the plan. So generally speaking, when I do playbook, uh, what, what uh, Briscoe VO is asking here, on day one, for people who sign up on day one, I always offer a bonus. And for the last few playbook releases, that bonus has been a leads bonus. So I provide you with a certain number of leads for purchasing the playbook on the first day. And those leads include names, email addresses, job titles, um, mailing addresses, telephone numbers, websites, social media profiles, wherever applicable. So it's a really extensive lead list. Uh, but generally speaking, I get a new lead list produced for each release. And so uh, that is currently the plan uh, that I will be doing. I'll be doing leads and, and getting a new list generated. Ray says that X session is what I'm looking forward to. Glad to have you part of it, Ray. It's going to be a good one. Um, it, it's a, a really good opportunity if you're just, if you're unsure of your introductory email, or maybe you've never written one, maybe you've written one, but you don't know if it's good, whatever. We're going to work through that so that by the time you are done, you're going to understand what my formula is for writing a, a, an effective introductory email. Uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity to write an email. I'll give you individualized feedback on your email, help you to tweak it, make it a little bit better or whatever. Uh, and then by, by the end of the X session, I'll actually give you a voiceover lead that you can send that email to. And I'll probably show you how I found that lead because my guess is we're going to have a little bit of time in that session. So we'll, we'll, we'll do a little bit of that as well, because I know that that's a question that gets asked a lot. Uh, so if you're interested in signing up for that X session, I'm actually going to be teaching it twice. Uh, so you'll have an opportunity to, to get in uh, one of two different times if you want to do it. Actually, let me just pull up the VO Atlanta schedule here and take a look. So uh, I will be teaching that session on Wednesday, uh, March 23rd, sorry, Thursday, Thursday, March 23rd. Uh, and I'm going to be teaching at three o'clock in the afternoon on March the 23rd. And then I will be teaching that session a second time. That's going to happen on March the 21st, and I'll be teaching it from 4 until 7 p.m. So two different opportunities to get in if you are interested in signing up for that X session. Um, it's going to be a good one. All right, let's see. Where are we going? 
Ken says, on the opposite side of Vanny's question, what should I do if I find multiple contacts that could work for a cold email? Should I send it to all of them at once or target one at a time? This is a really good question, and this is something that is going to happen from time to time. You are going to find multiple contacts, and you're going to have to try to make a judgment call on which one of these contacts would be the best person to, to send it off to. And so uh, I would say always try to pick the most right one. What does that mean? Well, I'll tell you what, one of my secrets for trying to determine who the most right one is, if there's not a, a staff page that kind of outlines the different job titles, I might jump over to LinkedIn and I might look through the profiles of the people on LinkedIn and try to determine, do they mention that they are involved with voice actors or on the voiceover side or on the production side or on the post-production side, right? And I might look at some of those things to try and determine. Here's the other thing. If you've got, let's say you've got a, a creative director and you've got an executive producer and you're not sure, should I send to the creative director? Should I send to the executive producer? Let's say that you go ahead and you decide to send it to the creative director, but you weren't 100% sure, but you decide, that's who you decide to go with. One of the things that you can do is right within your email, don't be afraid to put in a little note that says, by the way, if you're not the appropriate person or if you're not the person responsible for working with voice actors, would you mind forwarding my email to the person who is? So that's one strategy that you can take. The other thing that I will do is, let's say that I've reached out to the creative director, I've sent my introductory email, I didn't get a response, maybe I've sent a follow-up email, didn't get a response, so I will file that one away, but then in a month or two, I'm gonna try reaching out to the video producer. Try starting that conversation all over again by reaching out to the video producer. So those are a couple of the different things that you can do uh, when you have more than one, but I would say as much as possible, I always want to send to just one person at a time. I think as soon as you start blitzing multiple people in the company at the same time, that's where you run the risk of coming across as spammy. That's where you run the risk that you might get triggered for spam. That's where you can also run the risk of coming across as really salesy. Now, that being said, of course, there's always gotta be a caveat, right? Let's say that you're reaching out to a company and maybe they've got two very distinct departments that you're targeting. Maybe you're targeting marketing, for forward-facing content, so videos that are going up on a website or on a YouTube channel. But maybe you also wanna contact somebody in the training department because you're interested in doing employee training, sales training, e-learning, right? That would be the one time where I would say it would be okay to contact two different people at, at, at the, at, in the company at the same time because I think you're targeting two different departments with two distinct messages, probably focusing on two distinct demos and two distinct types of voiceover work. So I think that's the one instance where you could potentially get away with it. I hope that answers your question, Ken. It's a great one. It's one that comes up often. Uh, again, welcome to Free Advice Friday. If you've got a question that you would like to ask and get answered, uh, please don't be shy. Uh, type your question into the comments. Just put a Q beside it so that it pops up on my screen and, and it stands out to me a little bit more. And I'm certainly happy to answer as many questions as I can here today. Uh, here's a question from the voice of Ryan. Is there an appropriate length of a marketing email? What to say, I want to say enough while keeping the less is more mentality without writing war and peace. And I think that's a very good strategy. You definitely do not want to write war and peace. Um, I've done research on this. I've, I've read a lot of different articles on this, blogs on this. I've read statistics on this. Uh, the general consensus is that that introductory email somewhere between 50 and 125 words. I will say that I find right around 100 words to kind of be the sweet spot. I don't want it to be so short that it comes across as curt or, or uncaring. Uh, I, I don't want it to be so short that it just comes across as an, an annoying spam, right? But I also don't want it to be so long that I'm wasting their time and because they, you know, you gotta remember these people don't know who you are. And so between 50 and 125 words, they say that's the sweet spot. I think for me, uh, again, I'm kind of in that that 100 word range. So I would say take that into consideration when you're writing. And here's the other thing you gotta remember. For me, the objective of my introductory email is to get people to go to my website. I want them to go to my website so that they will listen to my demos. I want them to go to my website so that they can find out a little bit more about me. A lot of the information that I'm not including in my introductory email is available on my website and that's why I don't need to include all of that information in my introductory email. So keep that in mind as well, right? Not everything needs to go into the email because a lot of that information 
is going to be on the website. So great question, Ryan. Hopefully that answers. Uh, and, uh, you know, cheers. Here's Dr. Pepper. Uncle Roy says, sign up for Mark's Accession Kids. Hey, if Uncle Roy says you should do it, I mean, you should definitely listen to Uncle Roy. I, I think it's really important that everybody listens to Uncle Roy. Uh, if you're interested in the Accessions, by the way, if you go to voatlanta.me, voatlanta.me, and uh, you can click, an, there's an Accession button right on the homepage of voatlanta.me. Still lots of places, still lots of availability to, to sign up. All right, here's a question from David. Hey, Mark, what's the most unique, intriguing, and eye slash ear catching marketing technique you've ever used. Um, honestly, I don't do a lot of really fancy stuff. I, I kind of stick to the basic stuff that I know that works. And so I'm really just focused on emails. For me, primarily, I'm focused on emails and I'm focused on LinkedIn. Now, that being said, um, I have tried things like handwritten postcards in the past, and in certain instances, I've definitely found some success with uh, writing a handwritten postcard uh, when it is appropriate. Um, you know, great example, my first agent that I ever got signed with, uh, I met her at VO Atlanta. Actually, I didn't get to meet her, uh, but I saw her at VO Atlanta, um, and she did a really great session, and there was one particular thing that she said that really stood out to me. And so I had made a note of that thing that she said that really stood out to me. And when we, when I got home from VO Atlanta, I was writing some handwritten thank you cards to a couple of the different speakers that I had uh, had the opportunity to meet and who had said some things that I found really impactful or, or you know, presented some really great information or whatever. And so I, I wrote a uh, handwritten postcard to this particular agent. Uh, thanking her. And that's it. Just saying, you know, thank you for this thing that you shared. It was really impactful. And, you know, it was, it was so great to have the opportunity to, to see you at VO Atlanta or whatever. That's all it was. Um, probably a couple weeks later, I got an email from that agent saying, let's talk. Like, okay, let's talk. And so I ended up going into the city and meeting her face to face at her office. And I ended up getting signed. And when I went in there, my postcard was actually hanging up on the wall uh, behind her desk. And so, you know, that worked. Uh, so I think there's a time and place for certain things like that. But I'm not really a big, flashy, fancy kind of guy because I'm doing things on a more individualized and personalized uh, approach, if, if that makes sense, David. I, I always want to make sure that as many of my messages as possible are coming across uh, personalized in some way. And so that's a that's a big part of my my strategy, and and so that doesn't always lend itself to big and and fancy and flashy. But I, I hope that answers your question. It's a it's a really good question. All right, here's one from Stevie. What do you think about the slight indifference strategy? Basically, reach out for collaboration, but throw in uh, phrases showcasing you don't really care that much or you're unbothered. Uh, that does not work for me. That would not work for me. Um, I know that there's a there's a segment of the population that kind of has that attitude now. Uh, but for me, I want to come across genuine. I want to come across as authentic. I think it's really, really important to come across as genuine and authentic. If I say I want to collaborate, I mean it. I really want to collaborate. And, you know, here's why I want to collaborate or here's how I think we could potentially find some opportunities to collaborate or whatever. So for me, uh, I, I'm taking things, uh, I take a different approach to things. Now, I'm not going to say that that strategy can't work. Uh, you know, maybe there's a certain age demographic uh, where that works, kind of a generational thing. Uh, but for me, I'm definitely taking a much more authentic and targeted approach with uh, with my marketing when I'm reaching out and, and hoping, looking for opportunities to collaborate with people. All right, guys, if you've got a question, please don't be shy. Uh, feel free to type that question into the comments. Just put a Q beside it. Uh, that way it'll pop up on my screen and I will be able to see it a little bit easier. Uh, let's see what else is going on in the chat. Uh, lots, of, lots happening here. Lots, uh, lots of people hanging out today. By the way, thank you, everyone. We're at uh, 42 people watching on the live stream right now, which is really cool. So, thank you for that. Uh, very quickly, while I'm waiting for some more questions to pop into the chat, I want to mention my Making Money with LinkedIn Masterclass. Uh, I completely overhauled this class uh, earlier this week. Uh, so updated information for 2023 to reflect some of the changes that have taken place in LinkedIn since the last time I taught this class, which was last year. Uh, so I'm going to be teaching this live on February 28th, 7 o'clock Eastern. So that's coming up this Tuesday. 
at seven o'clock Eastern. This is going to be a, a, about a two hour masterclass. And it's also, uh, you know, time permitting, I'll, I'll do a little bit of Q&A at the end of this session. I'm literally going to teach you everything that I know and everything that I am doing to make money with LinkedIn, which is absolutely one of my favorite social media platforms. Um, here's the best part about it, though. Everything that I teach in that masterclass, you can do with a free LinkedIn profile. Everything that I teach in that masterclass, you can do with a free LinkedIn profile. And I'm even gonna teach you some hacks on how to do things with a free profile with, well, well, avoiding getting put in LinkedIn jail because you've done too many searches and, and things of that nature. Uh, so that class again, coming up on Tuesday, seven o'clock Eastern, 7 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday, February 28th. Uh, again, it's about a two hour masterclass. Um, if you are not able to attend live, I would encourage you uh, go ahead and sign up for that one anyway, uh, because you are going to get access to a complete video recording when it's done. So if you can't attend live, you will not miss anything. Uh, there's the website. If you go to markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop, um, you'll see Making Money with LinkedIn is the first class that is listed. So check that out, Making Money with LinkedIn Masterclass. Uh, again, uh, gonna be teaching that one coming up here on Tuesday. 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, really looking forward to showing you all of the different things that I am doing on LinkedIn. I'm gonna teach you how to fill out your profile completely. I'm gonna teach you how to uh, maximize your SEO potential. We're gonna talk about getting your demos up there. We're gonna talk about filling out your experience section. We're gonna talk about uh, sending connection requests and building your connections strategically. I'm gonna give you all kinds of ideas for content that you can share on LinkedIn to keep yourself present on the network. Uh, we're gonna talk about using the LinkedIn jobs feature. We're gonna talk about LinkedIn advertising. We're gonna talk about uh, your LinkedIn SSI score. So everything is, is gets covered in this masterclass. Uh, so again, that's markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop if you're interested in checking that out. All right, let's see. Uh, Janice says, what should be done to prepare for the 228 class? Uh, Janice, show up. That's it. Just show up. Uh, when you show up, I will teach you everything that you need to know, and we will we will cover everything off. So I would say uh, bring a pen and a piece of paper uh, so you've got the ability to write notes, but you'll also be able to go back and revisit the class afterwards as well. Uh, you'll be able to watch the videos. So you know if you feel like you got too much information in the initial session, no worries. You can go back and absolutely revisit it. All right, here's a question from Annie. It says, hey, uh, I almost missed this. Have you ever done dubbing? Is that a very protected field? And I will be there on Tuesday. I have never done dubbing, and I'll tell you why. Honest answer. I don't have the patience for it. That's it. I don't have the patience for it. Um, the idea of having to sit and try to match timing, uh, it just, like, just thinking about that makes me break out in hives. Uh, so for me, personally, it's not a genre that I've ever explored. I just don't know that I have the patience for it and I don't know that I have the time commitment for it because it's hard work. It is absolutely a very special skill. If it's something that you're thinking about, I would encourage you to look for some sort of an exploratory session on dubbing. Uh, there might be a webinar out there that you could get access to through uh, uh, something like Gravy for the Brain or Ann Ganguza's VO Peeps or uh, the Global Voice Acting Academy, GVAA possibly Real Voice LA, uh, I would check some of those sources and see if you could find a webinar that might give you some of the, the basics. Uh, Graham says, how does the revised LinkedIn masterclass impact people that have already taken this class? Graham, you will get access to the updated video. As always with all of my courses, whenever I update them, uh, I'm just gonna replace the old video with the new video. Uh, so nothing that you need to worry about there, Graham, other than if you wanna go back and revisit the class after the fact, you can absolutely go back and revisit the class after the fact. Jordan says, not marketing related per se, but I was wondering if it's ever acceptable for a demo producer to use the exact same spot in two different people's demos. I would say no. For me, personally, I would say no. I don't think that that would necessarily be appropriate. I feel like, let me just tell you what my experience is with really good demo producers, and then you can make your own judgment call. So I've produced demos with Uncle Roy. Uh, I've done two demos with him. Both of them have been nominated for Voice Arts Awards. Uh, I've produced a demo with Anne Ganguza, uh, and I have also produced uh, a demo with J. Michael Collins. And in each one of those instances, part of the demo preparation with the producer was to sit down and kind of get to know me a little bit better 
get to know what some of my objectives were for the demo and, and get a better sense of what were the brands that mattered to me. You know, were there certain brands that I wanted reflected in my demo? Were there certain topics that I wanted to cover in my demo? And by determining those things, then we were able to create customized scripts. And this is commercial, documentary, explainer, e-learning. Um, we were able to create custom scripts that reflected the brands that I wanted to portray the 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 niches that I was interested in covering off and that helps to make for a much more personalized experience it makes me it gives me a deeper connection to those scripts when I go into the booth and record and so I think when you are working with a legitimate demo producer if they are not having that conversation with you I would question whether or not you're getting the best potential experience because if you're just coming in and they're just ripping off a bunch of generic scripts that they've got that they could have handed to 16 other different people. Are you really getting a custom personalized demo at that point? To me, it doesn't feel that way. Now, I'm not a demo producer, never claimed to be a demo producer. Uh, so I'm not going to judge demo producers for what they are or aren't or may or may not be doing. I'm just going to tell you from my experience working with some of the best producers in our industry, I've never had somebody hand me scripts like that. Uh, so, and I've always been very happy with the ultimate experience that I've had. So uh, take that as you will, Jordan. Uh, Amy says, sorry if you've already answered this, I missed the beginning. What kind of businesses people are you emailing to uh, direct to your website? I don't even know where to start with email marketing. All right. All right, Amy, here we go. Let's talk about that. First things first, what demos do you have available to market with? This is the most important thing. So if you're starting out and you just have a commercial demo, for example, maybe that's the only demo that you've had the opportunity to get produced, then I would be focused primarily on people who are creating commercial content because you can't really market to an e-learning company, for example, with a commercial demo. So first things first, what demos do I have to market? How do I target the people that reflect those demos that I have available. So uh, let's say that you've got your commercial demo. Uh, at that point, I'm gonna be looking for the companies that are doing commercial production. So that could include Google searches, that could include uh, social media searches. Remember that any of the social media platforms, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, whatever, any of the social media platforms are basically just giant search engines. And so you have the ability to go in and mine any of those platforms. Uh, by searching for the appropriate keywords or doing searches for uh, the corresponding hashtags, you know, doing a search for commercial, hashtag commercial, hashtag commercial production, uh, hashtag radio commercial, hashtag TV commercial, you know, different things like that. But bottom line, we're trying to figure out who are the people that's creating this content and then those are the people that you're ultimately going to reach out to. You know, if it's e-learning, you're, you're going to find out, okay, who are the companies that are creating e-learning content and who are the people that I need to reach out to? And that could be instructional designers. It could be e-learning developers. If you're looking for, you know, you've got an explainer video demo, you're going to do a search for explainer video production companies. If you've got a, a corporate narration demo, you're probably doing a search for corporate narration, corporate video production. Um, if you've got a commercial demo, you're doing a search for commercial production. You're looking for companies that are producing commercials for television, companies that are producing commercials for uh, radio, companies that are producing commercials for the web as well. So those are all the sorts of things that I'd be taking into consideration. So uh, hopefully, I mean, that's a very broad answer, um, but hopefully that, that gives you a little bit better direction. Steve says, mindset-wise, how do you frame competition? On one hand, aren't we pragmatically competing with other VOs versus competing with ourselves? Do you think external competition can motivate? I, I understand the argument because you're right. Uh, there, there's you know a lot of voice actors that are out there, and there's a lot of people that are auditioning for jobs on any given day. And you know, I, I know that when I see an audition from my agent, you know, there could be a thousand different people that are ultimately submitting for that project. Where I think voiceover is different from other areas is there are very rarely anyway no two voices that sound the same and so even though we are all voice actors and we may be competing in the broad sense all the male voices are competing against the male voices the 
English voices are competing against the English voices. The Spanish voices are competing against the Spanish voices. The female voices are competing against the female voices. The senior voices are all competing against each other. The the kid voices are all competing against each other, right? Uh, On a broad sense, sure. But on a more micro level, everybody's got a different voice. Everybody brings a different interpretation. Everybody brings their own unique sound. And on any given day, I know that my voice and the read that I deliver could be the exact voice and or the exact read that a producer is looking for on that given day. And so that gives me an opportunity. I I get asked often about, you know, um, with my coaching, why do I do free advice Friday? I'm literally sitting on YouTube for an hour every Friday afternoon and I'm answering voiceover questions. I'm answering voiceover marketing questions. I'm answering voiceover business questions. I'm basically giving away free advice to people who are my competition. Every time I teach a class, I do my LinkedIn masterclass. I do voiceover marketing playbook. I'm literally giving away all of my tips and tricks and secrets to my competition. But I don't see it that way. Because I know that my voice is different from your voice. I know that my reads are different from your reads. I know that that my skill set maybe is different from your skill set. I know that you offer things that I don't and I offer things that you don't. And so in that regard, I feel like there's just a lot of opportunities out there for all of us. And so I don't ever really think of it specifically in that that sense of competition, right? What I see is... If I can help other voice actors to elevate their game, then I lift up the industry as a whole. And and I feel like that's a good thing, right? By creating a stronger pool of voice actors that that have a more diverse set of skills when it comes to marketing and, and who market better and market more effectively and who run their business a little bit more professionally because of some tip that they've picked up from me or some trick that they've learned from one of my podcasts or something like that. That to me lifts up the industry as a whole. And if we can lift up the industry as a whole, I mean, that then I think is a good and positive thing. And so that's why I I do what I do. Hopefully that answers your question. All right. Dave Finoy just explained dubbing on his Facebook live show last Wednesday. So there you go. If you can find a video replay of that, uh, that might certainly give you a little bit more insight into dubbing. Uh, it just, I think it's like any, there, there are certain genres of voiceover that I think just require a special kind of person. Like I've said before, I don't have the stamina to do audiobooks. I just don't. I have so much respect for audiobook narrators who are able to sit down and, and you know, plow through 30 hours of narration for a book. I, like that blows my mind. I just know I'm not the right guy for it, right? Um, Same thing goes with video games. I just know I'm not the right guy for it. Uh, But I know that there are people out there who are, and I respect the fact that they have the ability to do that and they have that skill set. And and then at the same time, I know that there are people who look at some of the e-learning work that I do and think, what in the world? I would rather just be voicing 30-second commercials all day. Well, that's, you know, it takes all kinds, right? It takes all kinds. So... Uh, dubbing is one of those things that honestly, it scares the crap out of me, but there are certainly opportunities there. No question about it. All right. Steve says, based on supply and demand, what do you think are the top three non North American and European markets for English speaking North American VOs? Um, non North American and non European uh, there are opportunities in the Middle East. Um, I work in several different countries in the Middle East, uh, and most of them pay pretty decent rates. Uh, obviously, there's a ton of e-learning that comes out of India. Um, not always the best rates, but every once in a while, you might find a company who is just taking raw audio. Right. So they offer a very, very reduced rate, but they only want raw audio. So if you don't have to do any editing whatsoever, uh, you know, maybe there is a a use case for that for for certain voice actors. Um, I would say probably the number one market for me outside of Europe and the United States, North America, uh, I would say probably the number one market for me has been Dubai. Um, I have booked some stuff 
from South America before. Uh, I do every once in a while book some stuff out of Mexico. Uh, and Mexico can be hit and miss again, right? Um, there's some really good rates in Mexico. There's some really not good rates in Mexico. Uh, but I think that stands true for any country. I think there are really good rates in Canada and there are really bad rates in Canada. And I think there are some jobs that pay really good rates in the US and there are some jobs that pay really bad rates in the US. So I, I mean, I just think really, I'm just looking at if if there's a country where English is spoken or if there's a country where there is a, a, a broad enough English population for me, obviously, because I'm an English speaker, um, there's potentially an opportunity to market myself there. And that's kind of how I think about it. Christopher says, curious to know, how did your demos get nominated? How does that process work? Okay, so uh, I, my demos have been nominated for SOVIS, uh, Society of Voice Arts and Sciences, uh, SOVIS Voice Arts Awards. You've probably heard of the Voice Arts Awards. Lots of people have. Um, with the Voice Arts Awards, as with basically any award that exists, you have to submit your demos for consideration. And so um, I submitted my demos. Uh, there's a, a submission process on the uh, Sovis website, which you can follow along with. Uh, you submit your demos for consideration, uh, and then those demos go before the judging panel. The judging panel narrows down all of the pool of demos that have been submitted to uh, the finalists. Uh, and then the finalists are the ones that are ultimately getting nominated. And so uh, that's the process. Now, there's the Sovis Voice Arts Awards is, is probably uh, the most popular of the voiceover uh, award shows. That's probably primarily because it has been around the longest. Um, but there are other options that are out there. Uh, including uh, One Voice, which does an awards show. Uh, and so that might be another one that you want to look into. Uh, let me just throw this link up here. Um, I had the opportunity uh, towards the end of the year, last year, I guess it was, to interview Rudy Gaskins, who is the uh, CEO, one of the founders and CEOs of uh, the Society for Voice Arts and Sciences, uh, Sovis. Uh, so I had an interview with him on my podcast. It's episode 182. Uh, if you want to search that one up, uh, you can go to vopreneur.com or, of course, wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. Search for episode 182 with Rudy Gaskins. Um, and I asked him a lot of questions uh, about Sovis, but also about the Voice Arts Awards and how all of those work. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of voice actors in the last little while uh, posting about their nominations for the Reed Awards, uh, which are for political. Uh, same thing. Those are awards that you submit to. Um, there's the, uh, what is it? The audio awards that I think are for, uh, for audio books. So there's a lot of different options that are out there, but as with uh, pretty much all of them work the same in that you do ultimately have to submit for consideration. Good question. All right. If you've got a question that you would like to ask again, welcome to free advice Friday. I'm happy to answer any voiceover business and marketing related questions that you may have. So don't be shy. Uh, feel free to type your question into the comments. If you just put a Q beside it, it pops out on my screen a little bit easier for me to find as I'm, I'm scrolling through all of the things that are happening in the chat right now. But uh, certainly happy to stick around and answer some questions for you. I will get back to having guests. I promise I will get back to having guests. I know it's been a while since I had a guest on Free Advice Friday. Um, hey, if there's anybody that you'd uh, particularly be interested in seeing on Free Advice Friday, let me know. Uh, you can type that in the comments or you can send me a, a, an email to mark at markscottvoiceover.com. Uh, but I will start getting those scheduled again and, and getting some people back. I, I'm still, Cliff is waiting. Cliff Zellman, he, he's messaged me. Mark, when are we going to do it again? Because uh, we ended up having to, to reschedule uh, the session that I was supposed to do with Cliff Zellman. We we're going to talk all about automotive. Uh, Cliff had a little bit of a medical issue that he had to deal with. And so he wasn't able to do it on that particular day. Uh, but we will we will get back to that one. So we will have Cliff on and, and uh, talk about automotive. So that's one that's definitely going to be coming up for sure. Don't be shy. Feel free to ask a question. Uh, speaking of the podcast, if you've missed this week's episode, brand new episode came out yesterday. Uh, it's the tools I use in my VO studio. So uh, right now I am in the process of what I call the tools series, uh, just sharing a lot of the services and the apps and, and different things that I use to run my voiceover business. And so uh, the first week I, I did uh, the tools that I'm using to get paid and shared, I think, seven or eight different ways that I'm uh, getting paid for my voiceover work. Uh, 
Last week was the tools that I use for scheduling and time management, which is a question I get asked about all of the time. Uh, this week, it's the tools that I'm using in my VO studio. So I just talk about some of the different equipment that I've got, the microphones, the interfaces, computer software plugins, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so if you're interested in uh, what's in my studio, uh, that's what this week's episode is about. Uh, so I'm going to continue on with this tool series for a little while because uh, I'm enjoying it and uh, I get asked about it all the time. So I figured, hey, why not do a podcast about it? So uh, that's the new episode, what I'm using in my VO studio. Again, that's available at VOpreneur.com or, of course, wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. So what can I answer for you? What questions do you have for Free Advice Friday? Don't be shy. It's an open chat. Anything that you've got business and marketing related, I am certainly happy to answer those questions. If you're going to type it into the comments, just put a Q beside it uh, so that I can uh, see it when it pops up in the chat, but I'm certainly happy to hang out and answer some questions for a little bit longer. If you've got questions that you would like to ask and get answered, I'm uh, just going to quickly scroll back through and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Uh, let's see. I don't think I've missed anything. If I did miss your question, I do apologize and feel free to type that into the chat again, uh, so that it will pop up again and I will see it. Great to see everybody hanging out. What are you guys doing this weekend? I started a bathroom renovation last weekend, which ended up being a really stupid idea. Um, I should know better than to do renovations in this house because every time I try to do a renovation in this house, it just turns into a nightmare. Uh, and so what was supposed to be a quick and simple, you know, one day sort of deal with a, a bathroom renovation is now turned into uh, electrical, plumbing, drywall, like you name it, I'm having to do it. Good times. Uh, so that will, that will continue this weekend. So that's my exciting schedule for the weekend. Oh, here's a question. Mark, I'm not looking to get personal, but curious if or how your wife is involved in your career asking for a friend. Um, my wife has her own job. Uh, so my wife is involved in my career in that she is uh, support. She's a, a an, an emotional support. She is a sounding board sometimes. Um, and, and when I say sounding board, uh, sometimes she just sits there and listens to me vent. Uh, and sometimes she sits there and listens to me and offers her insight and perspective. Um, probably the most important thing outside of the, the support, which is hands down the most important thing. The next most important thing is my wife is responsible for keeping all of my receipts, expenses, et cetera, um, because I lose them. Uh, what do you want me to tell you? I lose them. So uh, anytime that I, I make a purchase for work, uh, anytime that a bill comes in or, a, or there's a, a receipt, a tax receipt, a charitable receipt, a business expense receipt, whatever, um, I, it, my, re my job is to give them to her so that she won't lose them because I will lose them. Um, and so that's actually really, really important because, you know, taxes, hey, we all got to pay taxes. And so I, I need that. Um, but that's the extent of it. I have had her, uh, I've got her hired a few times to do some voiceover work for me, uh, in the past, but, uh, I, I don't think that it's the, I don't think that it is the career choice for her. So she actually works as a teacher. Um, I mean, obviously right now I would say that her full-time job is taking care of the boo. Uh, and then, uh, you know, she's back to work a couple of days a week right now, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's where my wife is involved in my career. And, uh, uh, I'm grateful for just for, to have her there to be a support and a sounding board because that's a big deal for me. Laura says, I always feel like I'm not doing enough no matter how much I do get done for marketing advice, never enough time. Uh, I mean, Laura, it, it's all relative, right? Because for one person, um, they've got to contact five people a day. For another person, they've got to contact 20 people a day. Uh, and, and the person who contacts 20 people a day may still feel like they're not doing enough uh, because it's all relative, right? And so uh, the biggest thing is is prioritizing, right? One of the things that I'm a big proponent of is evaluating whether or not something is working. So prime example, uh, I started playing around with TikTok towards the end of the year last year. I started playing around in the fall. I signed up for an account a long time ago, but I'd never done anything with it. Uh, I decided to start playing around with it a little bit in the fall, posted some videos here and there, was interacting with some people here and there. 
Um, but ultimately I just didn't, it just didn't feel right to me. I just didn't, I wasn't, I don't know. I, I don't know how to explain it. It just, it didn't feel like the right platform. And so some of you, if you've, you're connected with me on TikTok, you've, you've maybe noticed that I, I haven't posted anything there since December. Um, and that's okay because I've only got a limited amount of time and I want to make sure that I'm devoting that time to the things that are producing results. Um, and, and not only that are producing results, but things that I enjoy doing, right? I, I want to make sure that I'm engaged on a daily basis with things that I actually enjoy doing. And so I've decided that TikTok is not a priority for me at this point. It doesn't specifically mean that I've abandoned it. I might revisit it again, but right now I've just decided that it's not a priority for me. And so that's okay. And so feeling like you're not doing enough, I think that term is relative because I think you're the only person who gets to decide what is enough, right? I can't tell you uh, how much is enough or how much is not enough, but I would say that prioritization is a big part of it. And so sitting down and evaluating, okay, if you feel like I, if you feel like you don't have enough time to do all of the things, then one of the first things that I would be looking at is, do I even need to be doing all of these things in the first place? Odds are you probably don't necessarily need to be doing all of those things in the first place. And so that's by eliminating some of those things that you don't need to be doing, that's one of the ways that you're probably going to free up a little bit more time. Uh, Steve says, say you meet random person in public, have a great conversation and want them to know you're a pro VO, always looking to collab. What's a smooth, non-cringe way, uh, non-selly way about it? Is it uh, handing them a card, a website, et cetera? So if you meet a random person in public and you have a conversation with them and you feel like there is an opportunity to collaborate on voiceover because of what they've told you, you've, you've learned about what they do and you understand, hey, there may be an opportunity to collaborate. I don't think that it's cringeworthy to make that observation. If you're just walking up to random people on the street and saying, hey, by the way, I'm a voice actor and here's my card, that's kind of cringeworthy and selly. But if you're having a conversation on the street and you find out that that person's a realtor and they are creating virtual tours for the million dollar properties that they're listing and you happen to say, well, have you ever thought about adding narration to those virtual tours that you're creating, that's not cringeworthy. That's value add, right? That's that's adding value to their business. And so I would say that that's how I would look at it. If you feel like, based on the conversation and what you've learned about them in that conversation, that there is a genuine opportunity for collaboration, then making that point that there may be an opportunity for collaboration, there shouldn't be anything wrong with that. And that's where I would say, yeah, handing out a, a business card is, uh, you know, that's a... a, a probably the easiest way to go about it at this point. What does your work week look like in terms of how do you manage your time each day? Uh, it depends. Honestly, that's not an easy question for me to answer because I've got a lot of different things that I'm doing. So for example, this week, I blocked out my calendar this week. I was not available for any coaching sessions or anything extra this week. I mean, I would do voiceover if voiceover came in. But I had blocked out my entire schedule this week because my priority this week was working on Playbook 3.0. I needed uninterrupted deep work time in order to be able to focus exclusively on Playbook. And so that was what I did. Um, if you actually listen to last week's episode of the podcast, in last week's episode of the podcast, I talk very extensively about what I'm doing, how I'm managing my time, and some of the different tools that I am using to manage my time. So I would say uh, certainly go back and revisit that episode if you haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. Uh, episode 198, it's called The Tools I Use for Scheduling and Time Management. Um, that's on the VOPreneur website and wherever fine podcasts are given away for free. But I talk specifically about some of the things that I'm doing and some of the ways that I'm prioritizing, some of the way I block out uh, time in my calendar in order to, to be more efficient and in order to make sure that everything is getting done. But I'll tell you, one of the biggest things for me is really just prioritizing uh, what needs to get done and how do I build time into my schedule in order to make sure that I get those things done. All right, here's one from Jan. It says, hi, I'm brand new to VO. Where do I start first? Where should my focus be? Getting training, getting a demo done, getting a website. Uh, Jen, absolutely 100% without question, start with training first. Um, before you spend 
any money, before you spend any money on a demo, before you spend any money on a website, before you spend any money on, on buying equipment or anything like that, Jen, uh, I would absolutely be looking at some coaching and I would be looking at reputable coaching. Um, maybe just booking one introductory session with somebody uh, so that they can tell you, yep, I think you've got what it takes or maybe this isn't the right place for you to be. I would avoid packages that come with a promise. So if you go to a, a website and it says, you know, for X number of dollars, you're going to get five coaching sessions and then we're going to produce your demo at the end of those sessions. Um, I would watch out for stuff like that. Because here's the deal, maybe in five sessions, you will be ready for a demo, but it might take 10 or it might take 15 sessions before you're ready for a demo. But if that company produces you a demo, no matter what, after five sessions, you've just flushed your money down the toilet because now you have a demo that you're not able to market with. And so I would be very strategic in who I coach with. I would be very cautious of spending any money on anything else before I work with a coach. I know that you want to rush out. Uh, I know there's a temptation to rush out, get your website set up, you know, get a logo designed, um, buy microphones and computers and interfaces and, and all of that sort of stuff. But I think that it, it runs the risk of being cart before the horse. And I don't say this to discourage you, Jen. I say this to protect you. Because I've seen too many voice actors who have gone out and spent thousands and thousands of dollars on stuff and not been able to get a return on that investment. And so patience to pursue things the right way is really important. Um, Uncle Roy, uh, Roy Yokelson is, is in the, the chat right now. Um, Roy is a reputable coach and absolutely somebody that you could do an exploratory session with. He was the first coach that I worked with. And Ganguza, absolutely a reputable coach. Everett Oliver, reputable coach. Dave Walsh, reputable coach. Brad Highland, reputable coach. J. Michael Collins, reputable coach. Uh, so, you know, some of those names are, are, are people that you might want to have a conversation with. Maybe look at their websites, book a consultation with them or something like that. Uh, but I would say start down that road first um, before you start to do anything else. Hopefully that answers your question. And good luck to you because this can be a really cool industry. It can be a really fun way to make a living. But in order to set yourself up for the greatest potential for success, you got to start out right from the beginning. Ray says with Asana, do you feel the basic free version is beneficial? I looked into it after listening to your podcast and I wanted to know your point of view. I only use the free version of it currently. Um, I've not seen any reason to upgrade at this point. I've not had any reason to upgrade at this point. Uh, I don't know if I'm just not using it enough. I mean, I use it alone and I think that makes a difference. I don't need to, to collaborate with a team or anything like that. So that probably makes a little bit of a difference as well. Uh, but yeah, for me so far, I've been able to do everything that I need to do uh, with the free version. I know there's a couple of questions still in the chat and I'm definitely gonna do my best to get to those. But one more time, I just wanna mention Making Money with LinkedIn. This is my masterclass that's coming up on Tuesday evening, February 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. A two hour masterclass that is literally going to teach you how to make money with LinkedIn. Uh, some of my biggest, most lucrative clients have come from LinkedIn. Like I'm talking like clients that are paying me five figures a year. Uh, they have come as a result of, of LinkedIn. And so it can be an incredible platform for finding leads and nurturing relationships. And everything that I teach you in this masterclass, you will be able to do with a free LinkedIn profile. You will not need LinkedIn Sales Navigator. I'm gonna teach you all the tips and the tricks and the hacks on how to do everything with a free profile. Uh, there are still spots available. If you can't attend live, don't worry. Sign up anyway, you will get access to a complete video recording when the session is done. Uh, you can find it by going to markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop, markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop. 
and you will see Making Money with LinkedIn is uh, the first class that is listed there that is available. So sign up, you'll get, uh, as soon as you sign up, you will receive an email with the instructions for how to join the live session. And then once the live session is complete, I will send an email to everybody to let them know that the video version is available to go back and view. So there you go. That's Making Money with LinkedIn coming up on Tuesday, uh, February 28th, 7 p.m. Eastern time. All right, here's a question from Amy. Do you have any episodes on editing VO or have a source you highly recommend for learning editing? Uh, Uncle Roy, also, what platforms do you recommend for making sure you're involved in besides LinkedIn? Okay, so two questions there, Amy. Okay, first question, answer to the first question is, is uh, Uncle Roy. Um, Uncle Roy teaches how to use Adobe Audition, uh, Twisted Wave, and Audacity. Am I missing any, Uncle Roy? Uh, so depending on what software you're using, he's able to teach you how to use that software more efficiently, set you up with keyboard shortcuts to make the experience more enjoyable. And uh, it is absolutely worth it. Even for me, I came from radio and I used editing software for years working in radio and in television. And even when I did Uncle Roy's two hour life changing session, I learned a lot of stuff that I had not known even after a decade of using some of this software. Uh, so absolutely worth it to make that investment to learn how to edit because a big part of what you do every day is going to be editing. And so the more efficient that you get with it, the more time you gain back to work on other money-making ventures. And so I would absolutely say that it is essential to, to learn how to edit. Now, as to the second question, what platforms do you recommend making sure you're involved in besides LinkedIn? I think that's really a matter of personal preference. I think everybody's gonna respond differently to, to different platforms. I think also your objectives may determine or help to determine the types of platforms that you're involved in. So for example, if your goal is to pursue video games and character and, and animation, I would say Twitter is probably the best place for you to be because there is such an active and thriving community on Twitter that are in those spaces. If you love doing video, then maybe you need to be on TikTok or maybe you need to be doing Instagram reels, right? So I, I think the platforms that you need to be on depend, one, is there a platform where I am more likely to find the buyers that I am interested in getting in front of? Two, is there a platform that I am better suited towards based on my likes, my skill set, you know, my, my capacity, right? Uh, three, is there a platform that I would be more excited about because of my likes, my skill set, et cetera, right? I can say, Amy, you should 1000% be on TikTok. But if you absolutely loathe video, then what diff, what, what good's TikTok gonna do you, right? Like it doesn't make any sense. And so I think those are the things that I would be looking at to try to determine, is there a social media platform that makes the best sense for me uh, or other are there other places where I can be looking for work? So those are some of the things that I would definitely be taking into consideration. John says, are there other ways to find direct marketing contacts other than LinkedIn social media, and Google searches. Uh, John, I teach a masterclass that's called 101 Ways to Find VO Leads. Um, that masterclass is about a two-hour class. Uh, and ultimately, in the end, I, th I think I gave 122. I think it might have been 122. Uh, but anyway, it's called 101 Ways to Find VoiceOver Leads, and, and that's what it's all about. It's about all of the other places to look for leads that you're probably not thinking about. And I'm not gonna tell you that you're gonna use all 101 of them, but I would say with 100% confidence that as you work your way through that masterclass, there are gonna be things that you're gonna have light bulb moments if you decided to, to, to do that masterclass. Uh, that one's available at markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop. Again, markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop. Uh, and it's available for instant access if you're interested in checking it out. But yes, there are a lot of different places. What you realize as you start to open your eyes to it, leads are literally everywhere. Like one of the examples that I talk about is, you know, when I was going to conferences on a more regular basis, you know, 2019, I think I did like half a dozen different conferences. Um, 
I would be riding in the shuttle to the airport, right? From the hotel to the airport. I'm riding in the shuttle and I'm looking at the names on all the buildings and I'm looking at the names on the billboards and I'm making notes of the names on the buildings and I'm making notes of the names on the billboards so that I can go back and look them up later and see what, what do they do? Is there a possibility that they might do some training? Is there a possibility that they might be creating some videos or some commercials or something like that? And so it really becomes a mindset where you just start to recognize, wow, leads really are everywhere. But that masterclass would certainly be a, a, a jumpstart for you. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, again, markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop. Karen says, hey, Mark, where can I find advice on how to create an effective VO website? I'm also a singer and composer, and I'm wondering if I should have one site with a link. Thanks for any light you can shed. So uh, because you're a singer and, and composer, I think that those singer, I think that the, the singer thing and the voiceover thing are closely enough related that I think they can go on the same website. But I think that they should be two different sections of the same website. So you might have a landing page. Um, uh, I, I don't know what your website is, but let's just say that it's karencole.com, right? So we're going to go to karencole.com. And from karencole.com, you can choose to enter the singing site or you can choose to enter the voiceover site. Now, when I'm marketing, if I'm marketing to voiceover leads, I would send them to karencole.com forward slash voiceover, right? I would send them to the voiceover place. But I do think that you can combine those two things on the same website. Uh, as far as where to go to, to consult with somebody, uh, my website was built by voice actor websites, Joe and Karen, uh, voiceactorwebsites.com. Uh, and I absolutely 100% recommend Joe and Karen for uh, websites. I think that they are one of the best. So I would say definitely give them a shot at voiceactorwebsites.com. Where's the boo? Uh, she's taking a nap. Unfortunately, Free Advice Friday runs right in nap time now. I, you know, I, I know everybody wants to see her, uh, but timing, timing. What can I tell you? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you for this, guys. Be sure to hit that like button to help Mark's visibility on the platform. Yes, thank you, Sean. Like it, subscribe to it, tell your friends about it. Pass it around. Spread the word for Free Advice Friday. Uh, thank you so much for that. I, I appreciate that, Sean. All right, guys. Well, uh, it's 2 o'clock. I got to wrap this up because, uh, honestly, I got to get back to Playbook. I got to get back to doing the updates for Playbook. Uh, one more reminder, Making Money with LinkedIn, the master class coming up on Tuesday. This is an amazing class, guys. You are going to learn so much from this class. If you are using LinkedIn or if you are thinking about using LinkedIn, if you just don't know how to use LinkedIn, uh, I would say this is a class that is going to be a difference maker for you. So check it out, markscottcoaching.com forward slash shop. There's still space available. Live for two hours, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. But if you can't attend live, you will get access to the video recording, so you will not miss anything. So check it out sign up. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out as always. Um, let me check my calendar very quickly. I do have free advice Friday in my calendar next week. So, uh, provided everything goes well, I will be here live on YouTube again next Friday, one o'clock Eastern, looking forward to hanging out with you and answering all of your voiceover questions again. So thank you very much. Uh, whatever you decide to do this weekend, don't renovate a bathroom. Uh, it's a nightmare. Outside of that, have fun, stay safe, and go find some leads.